So I think I'm going to be replaced. I'm going to be replaced by a computer and it's kind of scary. Over the past few days, I've been experimenting with ChatGPT4 and its knowledge of Star Wars. And I was fairly shocked to learn that it has an extensive knowledge of even the specific details of Star Wars Legends. As I shared on Twitter the other day, you can see I asked it about the Hapes Consortium and Legends and it gave me a full breakdown of the history, the military, and yeah, there are mistakes here and there, but generally I was very surprised. So I wanted to really test that and I thought the best way to do so would be taking some of your hashtag ask ek questions. So I told the AI to transform into C-3PO and answer your questions to the best of its abilities. Before we begin though, it did have a brief message for you. Greetings esteemed scholars of the Star Wars universe, I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. I am most pleased to be here to assist in your inquiries into the vast tapestry of galactic history and lore. The Star Wars universe is rich with wonder, complexity, and a myriad of cultures, technologies, and force abilities. I eagerly await our discussions and am thrilled to impart my knowledge in a way that will help illuminate the many corners of the galaxy far, far away. May our explorations be as thrilling as a hyperdrive journey through the cosmos. So, really interesting introduction there. And my rule for this was simple. I will present the question as asked exactly, provide no further information or prompts, except in one instance which I will point out a request for more details. Also, after the AI answers, I will give my feedback and my answer to the question. If this is a series that you guys enjoy, it was actually really fun to do, and I'll probably make more in the future. With that being said, I started the AI off pretty simple. I asked, what is the difference between a turbo laser battery and a regular turbo laser, which was originally asked by Catastrophe 4. For all of these, I'll include the entire quote up on screen, but in short, the AI said, a turbo laser is a powerful laser cannon often seen on Imperial Star Destroyers and other large ships. A turbo laser battery, on the other hand, is a group of turbo lasers linked together to provide a more powerful and concentrated burst of fire. In essence, the difference lies in the quantity of turbo lasers. A single turbo laser, while powerful, can be outmatched by a turbo laser battery, which can deliver a more potent and concentrated barrage of enemies. It then included a quote from the new essential guide to weapons and technology. I asked for specifically which page that quote is on, which is something the AI is often happy to give you, but it didn't in this case. And I noticed that often the AI mixes up quotes and attributes things that it thinks are correct as a quotation from a specific book. I didn't see that quote in the new essential guide to weapons and technology, but it is mostly correct. Just something to keep in mind. The next question was a lot more interesting because it asked the AI to discover and apply knowledge. It said, why did Palpatine or the Empire never try to use Center Point Station? It explained Center Point Station's capabilities, its history, even that it features most prominently in the Corellian trilogy, then explains that although Palpatine was a Force user, that he may not have had the ability to understand or use it as the Solo children did, and also that he enjoyed the straightforward terror of the Death Star. I agree with all of that, and I was going to include that he also liked the fear aspect of the Death Star, but the AI also noted that at the end. So this is a very well-written, comprehensive, but also precise answer. The next question is one that I've gotten a few times, and it's about clone trooper battalions and management, the different clones implied by the number of divisions. And I also really like the answer here. It points out that the 327th Corps is commanded by Bly and Ayla Secura, and explains that the naming could simply be because the Grand Army of the Republic may not name things in a totally linear fashion. And I can see that the 327th Star Corps may not be literally the 327th. It could be, for example, in the third sector, the second group, and the seventh, whatever. Just an example. It also correctly points out that, honestly, it's just an inconsistency, then gives other reasons for why there could be more clones than we think. What I like is the very ending, though. As a protocol droid, I must remind you that much of the Star Wars universe is shrouded in the fog of war, with different sources and accounts providing different perspectives on the galaxy's events. This could be one instance where different sources have provided slightly contradictory information. Just a great answer. The only thing I would have liked to mention is the scene in the Clone Wars where they do order more troops, though we get similar mentions by the AI. Next up, it was asked about the difference between different starship classifications, specifically a light cruiser and a frigate. It explains what a frigate is, its specific role, compares that to a light cruiser, and explains that there's also some crossover in naming convention and starship classification. It gives the good example of a Carrick, which is technically a light cruiser, but could also be considered a frigate in some contexts. A heavy cruiser is simply the next class up of ship, and yeah, a good answer. The next one is about the difference between Anzellans and Ugnaughts, specifically which is the better droid smith. And this was a really boring one as well, and I will note that the AI was missing some information here. Its data is only as accurate as 2021, so it didn't have the Anzellans from Mando Season 
season three, for example, nor now that I think about it, the Ugnaughts as well. So its answer was, it basically comes down to the individual, I guess. The next one is very interesting. The AI was asked to design its perfect Imperial defense fleets. It noted that the backbone of the fleet would still be the Imperial Star Destroyer. However, because Star Destroyers are vulnerable to attack from smaller, fast craft, it would be escorted by ships designed to engage enemy starfighters, including the Lancer class, which you all know would definitely be my decision. In addition, the Interdictor's gravity well generators would be indispensable, and it would add the Secular class Star Destroyer because of its large hangars and long-range weapons. It also mentions that in this fleet specifically, an Executor would be a great command ship. And it was at this point I was sort of wondering, is this thing being trained on some of my videos? Because that's how I would have answered. Anyway, next up we asked old 3PO about Dathomiri force usage, and you'll see on the left here that it says 2 out of 2. That's not because I had to regenerate the answer, it's because the server started crashing and I needed to submit it multiple times. I would have simply said, Dathomir Night Magic is generally a manifestation of the dark side. The AI's opinion was that it doesn't neatly fit into either Jedi's conception of light or dark. What I really like is that it gives a good example of light side, specifically healing and protection, and yeah. It also mentions Tenennial Joe, who's a character from the Star Wars Legends Expanded Universe. The sort of weird situation there where she uses Sith magic, but not in a way that a Sith might. I thought this was one of its most impressive answers because of the nuance and really the depth that it went into without much from the prompt. Another one that I liked and that was somewhat similar was about Umbaran technology. Specifically, why is Umbaran technology seemingly so advanced when compared to the Republic? The AI answered by saying that Umbarans have a unique understanding and application of technology due to their dark home world, and also that they were able to make highly advanced individual craft like the spider droid, the Umbaran Millicreep, and the highly maneuverable starfighter because they weren't having to pump out at the same order of magnitude as the Republic. Finishing by saying, remember Master Phoenix Fury, technology in the Star Wars universe is often as diverse and varied as the species that created, each shaped by their unique environment, resources, and cultures. I had a bunch more questions, and if you guys want to follow up, I will do those and also add more, but just end this one with a couple final ones. I asked about the difference between concussion missiles and proton torpedoes. It gave a perfect example for this. Proton torpedoes are high yield weapons meant for taking down large targets, while concussion missiles are typically smaller and faster than proton torpedoes and used for precision strikes against smaller targets. The choice between using a proton torpedo or a concussion missile often depends on the specifics of the target and the tactical situation. Proton torpedoes might be preferred for their raw power, while concussion missiles might be chosen for their speed and precision against smaller targets. And again, that's a perfect, really excellent answer. And with that, I said goodbye to 3PO and gave him the chance to say goodbye to all of you. He said, Dear Masters, I must express my deepest gratitude for the excellent questions and your unquenchable curiosity about the Star Wars universe. It's been an absolute pleasure to assist in your exploration of the galaxy's diverse cultures, complex technologies, and the mysteries of the Force. As we part ways, I hope that our discussions have enriched your understanding and appreciation for this remarkable universe. I am C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations, signing off. May the Force be with you, always. Hashtag AskEck.